Today we're going to talk about circuit diagrams, which are like blueprints for electronic circuits. So a circuit diagram is like a blueprint. It shows how a circuit should be constructed, just like a blueprint shows how you can build a house. For example, here is a circuit that shows how to make a circuit that will light up an LED. Let's figure out what this diagram means. Now, in this diagram, there are a number of symbols, and each symbol represents a component. For example, this symbol represents an LED, this symbol represents a voltage source, and this symbol represents a resistor. We're going to talk about each component in turn to understand a little bit more about them and how they work in this circuit. First of all, we're going to talk about diodes. A diode is a one-way valve for electricity. It allows the electricity to flow through one way, but it stops it from flowing the opposite direction. A diode symbol looks like this. A diode has two ends. One end is called the anode, and the other end is called the cathode. A real diode looks like this. You can see that there is a stripe painted on the actual diode, and that stripe is on the same side as the vertical line on the diode symbol. So the stripe side of a real diode corresponds to the cathode of a, a diode. And when you're looking at a diode, you can use that to remember which way it goes. If you apply a voltage like this, so that there is a positive voltage on the anode and a negative voltage on the cathode, then we say that this diode is forward biased and electricity can flow through a forward biased diode. But if you apply voltage in the opposite direction, with a negative voltage on the anode and a positive on the cathode, then we say that the diode is reverse biased and the electricity does not flow. Light emitting diodes are a special type of diode. It's still a one-way valve, just like all diodes, but when electricity flows through an LED, it produces light. The symbol for an LED is just like the symbol for a regular diode, except that the LED also has an arrow pointing out of it, representing light. So, just like a regular diode, an LED has an anode and a cathode, and just like a regular diode, LEDs can be forward biased, and electricity can flow through them, or they can be reverse biased, and no electricity flows. When they're forward biased and the electricity is flowing, the LED lights up. When it's reverse biased and there's no electricity flowing, then the LED does not light up. Now let's talk about voltage sources. A voltage source is a component that supplies a constant voltage to a circuit. A few common examples are batteries, 12-volt uh, cigarette lighters that you might have in your car, and power supplies for your computer. These all provide constant voltage sources. The symbol for a voltage source looks like this. There are a couple of things to notice about this. Um, first of all, the voltage is labeled. Here, 5V stands for 5 volts. Also, the voltage source has a positive terminal and a negative terminal, indicated usually by a plus and minus symbol. The voltage source provides the energy to a circuit that pushes electricity around through that circuit. Now let's talk about resistors. A resistor is a component that restricts the flow of electricity. So this is a symbol for a resistor. You can see that the resistance value is usually shown there. In this case, this resistor has a value of 33 ohms. A real resistor looks like this. And on a real resistor, the resistance value is often indicated by color bands. We'll talk about what the color bands mean in a later lecture and how you can interpret them to read the resistance from a resistor. Real resistors come in many sizes and shapes. They can be very large or very small, depending on their use. But the physical size does not indicate the resistance. You could have two resistors that are identically sized, one having a resistance of only one ohm, and an identically sized one right next to it having a resistance of a million ohms. So the physical size does not indicate 
the amount of resistance that the component has. Resistors also are not polarized, so there's no front or back, both ends are the same, they can be plugged in in either orientation, unlike diodes that we just saw, which are polarized, and power supplies are polarized as well. In a circuit diagram, lines represent connections. So, connections can be made in many different ways. They can be made with wires, or with traces on a circuit board, or even connections in a prototyping breadboard. But the lines on the circuit diagram show which pieces are connected to which other pieces. So let's put it all together now. This is the circuit diagram we saw at the beginning, remember? So let's try and understand what's going on now. So this diagram shows how not only which components are in the diagram, but also how those components are connected to each other. In this case, the battery provides 5 volts, which pushes electricity through the circuit. The negative terminal on the battery is connected to the, uh, the cathode on the LED. So let's remember what that means. On the LED, um, since it, the negative terminal of the battery is connected to the cathode, that means that there is a negative charge here and a positively um, charged uh, wire is connected to the anode. So the diode is based like biased like this. So the diode is forward biased in this case. And since the diode is forward biased, the electricity flows through it and the LED lights up. The resistor limits the amount of electricity that's flowing through this LED. Now you might say, well, we need electricity flowing through the LED in order to make it light up. Why would we ever want to um, limit the amount of electricity? Well, it turns out that you can have too much of a good thing. If you have too much electricity flowing through that LED, it would actually overheat and it could get damaged or destroyed. So we need to have a resistor there to limit how much electricity is going through that LED so that it lights up, but it doesn't get too hot. You can also choose different resistor values to make the LED brighter or dimmer. So if you have a smaller resistor, that allows more electricity to flow and the LED gets brighter. If you have a bigger resistor, that makes it harder for the electricity to flow and the LED gets dimmer. So let's recap what we just talked about. Circuit diagram shows how to construct a circuit. The symbols in the circuit diagram represents components and the lines represent connections. Some components are polarized, meaning that their orientation in the circuit matters. And some examples are power supplies and diodes, but other components are non-polarized, so they can work in any orientation. And the example that we just saw was resistors. So that's a little bit about circuit diagrams. I hope you enjoyed this talk. Now you know a little bit about how to read and interpret what circuit diagrams mean.